Hello everybody, I'm here at my storage unit and I just wanted to do a quick video and show you some of the artwork that I have collected and courageously collected over the last 30 years of my life. Right in front of you is a composite zodiac mirror and I'll zoom in on it and show you all of the detail and remarkable depth of figures, great gilding, original smoked mirror on the inside and just remarkably well done. Um, I used to remember who did this, and I'm drawing a blank on the designer, but look at the Zodiacs all the way around. And again, we're in the storage facility, so sorry about the lighting, but I'm gonna pause you there and continue the tour of my artwork in my storage facility. Hold on one second. Here we are in front of a remarkable antique carved picture of sparrow birds on branches, all carved out of one piece of wood, then painted and gilded in its original frame from China, probably around the turn of the century, if not a little bit after. But the detail and the color and the carving, absolutely extraordinary and very large for its um, style. I'm going on to the next one, and I won't keep telling you, but I'll just completely cut and splice the video as we move. Here we are in front of a beautiful 1940s illustration, art, drawing, and pastel. Sorry about the reflection of the other items in the background, but just a mysterious and wonderful scene. Definitely illustration, art, art and from an artist, sorry, and it's signed right there. So we have an original from right around the 1940s, but again, she was so beautiful. And then this half man, half goat with a sombrero playing a flute, that was a have to have. And um, again, just wanted to document these before I move forward with moving them and getting some things sold. So there you go. And then look at these two beautiful and handsome dogs, both with necklaces on, signed by the artist who I believe was local. And there you go, Ruth Burkholder. I believe Ruth was local. It is an original oil on board, and it was a gift from a dear friend before she moved. And she didn't want to move it with her, and she knew that I loved it. And of course, the expression on the dogs and the little light reflected in their eyes, true untrained folk art in a way, but so beautiful and so whimsical, and I loved it very much. And I still do to this day. I'm also very well known for my vintage lighting, and this is no exception. Look at this amazing chandelier. The prisms, just totally beautiful. They are all glass and then it's on a wrought iron and then painted black chandelier. Its drippiness and its timelessness and the crystals and the flower blossoms, just beautiful and classy and will go anywhere. And then right behind it on the wall um, is a Magnolia still life painting. Again, signed by the artist. Let me zoom in. I tried to do some research on Frederick and I didn't find much of his work online. Probably one of the artists that should have been held in high regard, but maybe forgotten about throughout time. Um, I would love to make his work really well known, and I'd really love to make a name for him, because look at the carved frame and the gilded frame, and the flower blossoms are just beautifully rendered, um, very much so in the mindset of the 30s and 40s, and uh, just a beautiful painting, an oil on canvas in its original frame. And here I stand in front of either a masterpiece or a painting that someone just had a whole lot of fun with. This one I've never truly been able to accurately identify. It is signed right there. And the signature is very hard to read because it is in the ocean waves. And I'm going to try and do some additional, additional research to try and figure this out before I sell it. But what an absolute stunning and, again, folk art and almost untrained artist. But look at the impasto painting on the mountains. 
And unfortunately, it was in a very, very, very neglected home. So it is extremely dirty and definitely needs to be cleaned. Anytime you see a gallery light like that that's hanging on a painting, apparently it was very important to somebody at some time. And I'll let you take that in because I've always been very drawn to this painting and I still can't figure out exactly why. But look at the boats and how stylized. And again, when you see paintings and art like this, you get the gut feeling that something like this likely belongs in a museum. Um, and there's just something that really got me going. And I'll go right back in under the signature. So maybe someone out there in YouTube land can help me out identify. But for right now, I'm just going to let it sit with me and I'm going to enjoy it. It's just fantastic. And I'm sorry about the dust on the walls, but the maid um, totally quit at the storage unit. I'm just kidding. I'll see you for the next one in just one second. I've always been attracted to landscapes that are peaceful and serene, but that remind me of things that I have seen both in Ohio and throughout my travels. And this painting is by um, Mr. Yost in Cleveland. And I will do some um, videos on his work and some more of his paintings. I have a very fond um, admiration for not only his work, but him as an artist. He was trained in Italy. Um, his brush strokes are so subtle and the images come out almost like magic as the surfaces are revealed one on top of another. And I'll back up and let you take that goodness in. But my, 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 what an incredible night landscape. Um, and even though there's no details in the foreground, you most certainly know that there are details that you start to see as you study the painting. But just a beautiful piece by an Ohio artist. And I believe this painting was purchased originally from him in 2007. Please ignore how dirty the floor is. <laughs> um, I didn't sweep, so I've got like leaves and fall uh, foliage all over the floor. But I wanted you to see this incredible um, Art Deco Demi Lune wrought iron and marble top table. And I also wanted you to see this incredible late 1990s charger. It doesn't appear to be in this, but it's approximately 24 or 25 inches across. Just the colors and the patterning made me extremely happy. And uh, this is definitely something that I would really love to move with me uh, to my next space. And um, I'm just vacating the storage um, space right now and uh, making some tough decisions. But I wanted you to see this incredible table and also this incredible charger. I have always been in love with and always admired Victorian shadow boxes. And this is one of the biggest and best I had ever seen. Those are actual dried flowers and a spray of wheat. But look at the inside of this picture frame. The inside walls are completely covered with decorative trim. And then the outside frame is just as beautiful as that interior as well. This came out of a place here in Ohio from West Lafayette um, that was called Shady Bend Mansion. And it was between Newcomerstown and West Lafayette, but closer to West Lafayette. Look at the oxidation and the age on the frame as well. Just a remarkable Victorian shadow box that again, being so complete and in such good condition, it had to come home with me. This is one of my most beautiful farm landscapes. I did have a very large holding of farm landscapes and also cows and sheep. Um, unfortunately, there has been some varnish bloom on the cow, so there is some slight molding there that needs to be addressed very quickly. It is signed in the corner here, but it is a Victorian original and extremely large. 
Unfortunately, I never had the opportunity to hang this, so it is down in the storage facility and definitely needs to be um, addressed with the mold situation just so that doesn't spread. It had been on there when I originally bought it because it was in a home in Silver Lake, Ohio, and it was that way when I purchased it. But look at the incredible Victorian frame. Absolutely beautiful with original gilding, never been repainted. And then I'll zoom back out so you can get the whole thing in and realize how incredible. Again, one of the things that uh, really just I, I found to be beautiful. Look at the reflection of the cow in the water. Just um, incredibly well done, incredibly well rendered. And one of the pieces of art that really spoke to me. Um, and I, you know, again, I, I love it. Uh, it needs to be restored and possibly um, possibly sold, but I'll decide that in a little while. I don't think any art collection is complete without a velvet painting, and this one is of Jesus, and I bought it at Hartville Flea Market last summer, um, and again, I said I would never own a velvet painting, but here it is, and part of my collection. Um, I loved the use of the canvas in creating the light and shadow. I love the tension in the fingers. I love the gracefulness and um, beauty of um, the uh, light and shadow. Um, the emotion that this had as well really spoke to me, and it is in its original chip-carved frame, um, so very large. This is about 38 inches by about 28 inches. Um, but again, um, just when you say you're not going to have something in your collection, all of a sudden, you know, you wind up with a velvet painting. Um, and it was either going to be of Jesus or Elvis. And I found this one and fell in love. So it was a have to have. I'm extremely well known for my leaded glass and slide glass lamps. And this one is an original right around 1915 to 1920. It is a Bradley and Hubbard. It is signed on the inside of the shade, but the shade is just beautiful with its caramel slide glass and its urn style form filigree. Beautiful, beautiful work on the shade, all complete. It is a six panel shade as opposed to an eight panel shade. But look at this base, incredible, incredible detail of these ram's head with busts and then down to a hoofed foot. Such a whimsical and magical and unusual form for one of these bases and complete with its original painted and gilded surface. But again, as I back out and you see what an incredible lamp with great presence and elegance and in really beautiful condition. So um, a stunner that again, I just wanted to show you so you could have documentation of the storage facility. It's no secret as an advanced collector that I also have issues with textiles and quilts. Here are just a few of the quilts in my collection. I bought based on pattern and color and also condition, but I wanted to stay with the handmade versions. I didn't want to get into machine stitched or mach machine produced, but this pile of quilts just keeps going and going and going and going and going. <laughs> but again, I went after unusual patterns. Uh, this one is a cathedral window that unfortunately is folded the wrong way. But um, there's a blazing star in orange and yellow. Um, but it just keeps going on and on and on with um, antique and vintage quilts. I wish I could open up the grape one because the way that this is embroidered and appliqued is just really beautiful. But again, I'm, I'm kind of reaching over a pile of other things here. But um, I just wanted to show you the um, antique quilts and uh, the ones that I thought were remarkable and beautiful. Most are, are Ohio, and I know most of the counties they came from. But look at the work in some of these. You know, this one's around 18, oh, 1850, 1860, um, in really good condition for its age. And look at the quilting, how they actually stuffed where they quilted. And look at the amount of work that that would have taken to get all these curvilinear lines and then to go in and applique the surface. It's just an incredible thing. Um, and that's only one pile of four. So um, there will be future videos on these.
Well, I had to dig out another cathedral window quilt and look at the work that went into this. All of these pieces are completely hand appliqued, and I did the math on this. There's 890 pieces in this quilt, 890. It's um, a true insanity to think that someone took the time to hand construct that as a quilt. And then look at the blazing star quilt that is on this bed. It's incredible. The colors, the patterning, just the way the pattern and the colors vibrate. The visual vibration is incredible, but something again that I've lived with for a long time and um, truly appreciate the work that goes into this. And again, I'll put my hand down for scale of the pieces. Look how small the actual diamond pieces are. Really fine work, incredible, incredible craft. And quilts are truly a labor of love, an absolute labor of love. Check out these lamps. I was going to leave them out because this was supposed to be on antiques and art. But look at this. These are all crystal rods and all the rods are in place. They all sneak out. So they all come out of there. Um, and it's a matched pair. There are two of them. Um, and they're such powerful forms with a, such grace and elegance. And when they're lit up, they are so magnificent. But to find a matched pair and not have any of these glass rods broken is truly uh, remarkable that they survived all this time. Um, and uh, just beautiful when they're lit up. But I wanted to include those. And right behind are the flapper dresses that I had in one of my shorts. So this is a net lace one from Paris, France. And unfortunately, in the short, um, it didn't get the beauty of the fabric. Um, it just didn't capture it. But uh, there you have, look at that work over and over and over, layer upon layer of the most beautiful and lush metallic net lace um, and lined in silk, but in such great condition. Again, please don't hang your dresses like this. I only hung them for a quick display. I rehung them now, but look at this one with the electric um, beadwork, electric um, uh, um, uh, luster beads on the finest silk and then lined in black. And then we have a miser's purse, which is completely hand beaded, um, and it has the slip rings on it, and that's miser, S-M-I-S-E-R, miser purse. And so if you look at this, there's a hole that opens up here, and then you can slip this down to hold the contents in your purse, but just remarkable beadwork and such beauty. And then on the final one down here, this one did not do well in the short video that I did, but look at the detail work in the rhinestones and the beads on silk, but I'll back up for you. Really, really simple, but then you get down to the bottom and look at some of the sequins and the rhinestones, and again, the beading and the way the dress is handled. But these three, you know, classic and not necessarily important, um, but but definitely something that's beautiful. Um, I will take them down and get them back into their acid-free boxes, but I just wanted to give you the opportunity to see the work that went into these. And unfortunately, in the short, you just couldn't see the detail work on this net lace one. Um, but again, incredible, incredible survivor and in remarkable condition. But I'll get into more of these. In my collection, I have approximately, I'd say a strong 40 or 50 now. I've lost track over the years, but I definitely will get into more of these incredible, incredible beaded dresses um, because I feel that um, there would be a big response for it. And I appreciate um, all of my viewers and many have asked to see these dresses. So again, we'll get into the flapper dresses a little bit more in the near future but I just wanted to show you those three while they're out. And here we are in front of a Parian Wear bust, and it was done for the Art Union of London, signed on the base. It's also signed Copeland on the back, but I don't want to move her because I didn't want to disturb the shade. But look at the beaded lampshade. Now, the lampshade would have been a later addition, but I didn't mind it with this. But look at the serenity of her face. Parian Ware was actually used around 18... 
1870 to 1880, um, and it was used to mimic carved marble at the time. So that's what Perry and Ware's job was. And as we span up from her, an odd pairing, but here is a mother of pearl inlaid horse picture. Look at the electricness of the mother of pearl that's been inlaid to a lacquer panel. It's energy and it's beauty and the lushness of the background but that glowing mother of pearl was something that when I found it, it was an absolute yes. And the gesture and the energy, like I said, in a lacquered panel signed by the Asian artist that constructed this, but just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful artwork. And again, I couldn't manage um, to get my mind around carving these pieces of electric mother of pearl and then inlaying them in this um, surface and then doing the painting around them and what a beautiful end result. So one of those things that really I thought was outstanding. And I wanted to end this video on the last room that I started to pack um, and this is all of the Ellie Smith bittersweet glass that I have at the second facility. Um, and this is going to be packed up and moved with me. I've collected Ellie Smith Bittersweet for a very long time. I found my first piece at Rogers Flea Market for about three or four dollars, maybe about, I would say about 16 or 17 years ago. But I was really drawn to the difference of the orange and the patterning. And these are all by Ellie Smith. Um, I did put these into a short feed and it got such great attention because Ellie Smith is definitely something that's now collected. Um, the swung vases are very much so revered by collectors um, and you can see why. These things are, are beautiful um, and the forms are so different and I really, really love the variants. This is only a fraction of the total of what I have. I probably have about another 70 or 80 of them, but those are already packed and ready for the move. But I just wanted to show you the ones that are um, still out and about. And unfortunately, I do need to clean them before we move them. But that's the completion of my video. I thank you so much for joining me for this quick trip around my artwork in the second house. There will be more videos coming like this. I appreciate your patience. I love you very much and have a wonderful day.